Hello Math 8 students, this is a calculator exploration using the TI Inspire calculators. We're going to be investigating uh, certain angle properties when I have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Although most of them you already do know, uh, there are going to be some new ones. So even though you don't get to explore with the calculator since you don't have them at home, I still want you to watch the video and learn from this exploration. We're going to start by creating a new document. No, I don't want to save the unsaved document, I am going to add a geometry page. When I add that geometry page, I'm going to start by inserting a line. And I want to fill up this uh, screen as much as possible, so I'm making it as big as I can. Parallel lines cut by a transversal, so it makes sense that I would need another line. But instead of me trying to create a line and make it be parallel, I'm going to construct a parallel line. So that's menu, construct, parallel. I start by clicking on the line and then I click where I want the line to end up going. So we can see that these are parallel, but this is not a very good line. It doesn't really go very far. So I'm going to hit escape so that I'm no longer in this particular menu. And then I'm just going to drag that line to make it extend to the edge of the screen. Um, notice, you'll, you'll notice that this happened correctly if I can take this line and swing it around and the line below it is also making those same changes, keeping these two lines parallel no matter what I do. We now have parallel lines. I want them to be cut by a transversal. So I will be adding a line that is going to cut through or intersect each of those lines. There's the transversal. The next step, I need a bunch of points. I need a bunch of points that I can use because eventually I'm going to be measuring the angles. So to make this happen, I need to go now to points and lines and choose intersection point to get started. And I want the intersection between this line and this line. So I click on each one of them and it adds that intersection point. And this one and this one and it adds that intersection point. And now I want other points that are just going to be on the lines that are already created. So I want a point here on this line about in that spot, a point on this line about in that spot. I'm going to continue on getting all of these points and now I've got enough points that I can use them to explain which angles I'm talking about and which angles I'm measuring. Um, some things that you can check again to make sure that this is all happening correctly. If I want to move uh, this transversal, that's the label, if I want to move this transversal you're going to notice that as I move the transversal it's also moving those intersection points. So it's always keeping that intersection point so any changes that I make it's kind of following along with uh, all of those points. So it's very handy. Uh, our next step is going to be to measure the angles. So menu measurement angle and this is tedious. It takes a little bit of time. I want to measure HAC and so I've done that and notice it does show me the arc so it knows which angle I measured but it does put it in kind of a weird place. So I'm going to move so that that angle measure appears in the actual angle that I measured um, and I'm going to continue doing that menu, measurement, angle, HAD now, and again it puts it in a weird spot. I'm going to go ahead and move that one now too. These ones I'm going to measure two at the same time and I'll just adjust those labels once I'm done there. So this one was that 81.7, this one is the 98.3, all right, and now I'm going to repeat the process again down here as well. So menu, measure, angle. Just going to do two at a time so that I can sort out those angle measures and get them where it makes sense to have them. And then I'll do the last two. Okay. There we go, looks good. Again, this is what's really nice is I can make changes to the transversal and it automatically remeasures those angles for me every time. I can make changes to the parallel and it keeps the other line parallel, but it also measures those angles for me each time I make any changes. Um, just so that I can see the specific behaviors that I want to see and um, without having to hurt my brain with too many mental calculations, I want to get these in such a way that I don't have these decimals. It makes it easier to see our, our patterns that we're looking for. So I'm going to move this transversal so that I don't have decimals. That looks like a good one. Let's do something a little bit different though. Let's maybe go, that looks like a good one. 
no decimals, but we can see all of those measurements and it looks great. Uh, first question that I have now that we've built this diagram and we can see um, that it measures every time I make those changes, what do you notice is the same? Hopefully you see many angles that are the same. Let's talk about those angles and let's talk about the relationship between those angles. And what I see the same, I see this is 74, this is 74, 74 and 74. So I'm going to go ahead and mark up this diagram. We had these angles were all the same. And then I had 106, 106, 106, 106. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those ones as well. We have 106 and 106, 106 and 106. And so I want us to take a second and recognize these relationships because most of them already do have names. For example, let's switch over here to this specific angle and this specific angle. What is the relationship between those two specific angles? Notice the position, this is one that we are already familiar with and this is vertical angles. Finish that statement though, vertical angles are congruent. So we know that they are both going to be the same and our diagram shows us that, that these are each yellow 74 degrees and 74 degrees. Let's look at a new angle relationship. Let's take a look at this relationship here, this angle and this angle. Notice they are both blue, but think about what that relationship is. I can get there from a translation. So this relationship is corresponding angles. And again, you can finish that statement, corresponding angles are congruent. They are the same, they're both that same blue color, so I know that corresponding angles are congruent. The next relationship is another one that we are familiar with. What about this blue angle here and this blue angle here? Again, that is a relationship that we are familiar with and that is alternate interior angles. Finish the statement though alternate interior angles, notice that they're both blue, so that means alternate interior angles are congruent. We have a new relationship that we haven't defined, but I think if we use the information from this one, it's easy to identify what it might be. Alternate interior angles means I'm focused here on the inside, but I also would like to show a different angle pair this one right here and this one right here. Notice that they are both blue so we know that they're congruent but think of a word that we can use to describe that relationship. How are they related? Similar to alternate interior angles, these ones are actually going to be alternate exterior angles because these angles are on the outside of those parallel lines, but we still alternate the side of the transversal and we're going from the top parallel line to that bottom pair in that parallel line. So we can see alternate exterior angles and again alternate exterior angles are congruent. That is that new relationship that I was talking about. We need to make sure that we can also recognize alternate exterior angles. There are some other relationships. These ones take care of all of the congruent ones, but I want to focus now on the non-congruent uh, angles. And what do you notice about the non-congruent angles? For example, I've got 74 and 106. That's what we see all over the diagram is 74 and 106. Compare the 74 and 106. Where are you seeing 74s and 106s? And what is that relationship? Some of you might be recognizing that this looks like it is supplementary, meaning it will add up to 180 degrees, so let's use the calculator to see if that is always going to be the case. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to create an expression that we can then calculate. So I want the expression to be A plus B. Let's try that again. A plus B. need to press enter this time. All right, now I've got my expression, let's actually calculate it. Menu actions, calculate, we're going to calculate this expression, but what do we want to be 
A, I'm going to choose one of the 74 degree angles, and I'm going to choose this one right here, that 106 degree angle. And what do we see when they add up? They add up to 180 degrees. So again, I'm just going to move these so that we can see. And what happens if I change these angles? What if I change this line to make those angles change? Even though the angles are changing, the sum isn't changing. It still is 180 degrees. I also am seeing, though, a different set of angles that are the same 74 and 106. So here we have 74 and 106. We've already named those before. 106 and 74, we've named those ones before. And we're seeing all of these pairs. Let's return. What would we call those? So we're looking here now at the yellow and blue pairs. In a yellow and blue pair, there we go. In this yellow and blue pair, or in this yellow and blue pair, we are seeing that these are supplementary angles, but they're supplementary angles because they are adjacent. So adjacent angles are supplementary. That means that they're adding to 180 degrees. And it makes sense they're right next to each other. It forms that straight angle, so it makes sense that they would be supplementary. But I want to focus on another pair of angles that are also supplementary, and that is on the inside of the parallel on the same side. Notice that we still have the same 74 and the same 106, which I know add up to 180 degrees, but these are no longer adjacent angles. They don't form a straight angle together. However, we do still see that relationship, and think about why. If we always see that 74 and 106, right, those are going to add up to 180 degrees because of supplementary or adjacent angles, we also have vertical angles. We have alternate exterior angles. So all of these relationships tie these two angles in together, so these only two options are going to add up to be 180 degrees, even if I'm looking at a different relationship here. And that relationship also has a name. It's called lots of things. I call it same side interior angles. And again, same side interior angles are also supplementary. So we're seeing that in all of the yellow and blue pairs of angles. So I'm going to actually highlight these. These are all of these yellow and blue pairs. Same side interior angles and same side interior angles. These are our yellow and blue pairs that are supplementary. And we had our, let's see if I can find my right tools. We have our adjacent angles which are supplementary. Those blue-yellow pairs are always going to be supplementary. So new angle relationships, the key thing is that when we have these parallel lines, we're only going to have two measurements. We're going to see those two measurements repeated everywhere in that diagram through alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, vertical angles, um, and now we also have the pairs that are supplementary, our adjacent pairs which are supplementary, and our same side interior angles. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.